They took control, the books are closed We can't look, no, no one knows What they're doing, what they're making They just say, hey, we're banking banksters and gangsters That's what I'm yelling They own your reality and control your salary They got a billion in the ceiling And a billion in the office A billion in their bedroom And it's locked in the closet, see? It ain't a problem to control who makes a profit When you're the ones cutting all the holes in our pockets Hello everyone, welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you can also find me on theconsciousresistance.com and theseedsofliberty.com. So today we have Blooded the Brave coming in from Indianapolis. Uh, he's a rapper and a voluntarist. He's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Um, and we're going to discuss his um, his recent album entitled Peace, and some of the um, some of his um, the big uh, recent um, videos against the odds and banksters. So, uh, Blood of the Brave, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Glad to be here, man. So, uh, sure, yeah. So, so um, I've, you know, I've heard a little bit of, about you, you know, from some of the pages on Facebook, and I'm like, who is this guy? It's, you know, really awesome stuff. Like, I, I love to interview rappers who have this message because, uh, you know, it's such a great medium to transmit the voluntarist message, you know. Um, and, and, and I think rap in general is a little bit, like, already subversive. Like, you know, going against the status quo, cri- criticizing the status quo is already ingrained in hip-hop, right? So it just completely makes sense for volunteers to be rappers, <laughs> you know. It's like some some of the, some of the rappers don't go all the way, right? <laughs> Whereas like no, nope. you know, people like you go all the way, which is awesome. So um, so I guess well, can we start off with how how did you become a volunteerist, and uh, you know what led you down that path? You know, any books or podcasts, and uh, and then you know how you incorporated rap into the message. Uh, yeah, um, I don't even know if people know what being a volunteer is. Um, like most people. And hip hop in general, like when you first hear it or any music that's about rebelling and being free, that's kind of where, where volunteerism falls in the line. So, you know, I knew I wanted to be free and I didn't want to have to answer to anyone, uh, you know, if I'm not harming anyone. That's what got me into it. Um, but yeah, the first rap line I ever heard was broken glass everywhere. And it was, you know, uh, somebody talking about the horrible conditions of their society. And it really caught my eye and mind. And I grew up in a musical uh, household. My brother was in a metal band for, he still is, 30 years. But it was, uh, rebellion has been in my blood. I'm full-blooded Irish. So it's just who I was. And then to find myself down the line of years of growing and learning, which we're supposed to do. I discovered uh, the message of of anarchism, which is to be free, meaning uh, no rulers allowed, and you rule and own yourself, and it's a beautiful thing to own yourself. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, is is there any books that uh, that you know really influenced you, or or personalities, or podcasts? Yeah, I'm more digital. Um, I have I have some books. Um, Chaos Theory. I have that book. It's it's good. But um, you know, I was a former activist for uh, Ron Paul and. Oh, wait. And uh, I actually won as a delegate now that I don't believe or even see the government for existing. I was supposed to go to Tampa and uh, be part of that that system that they still operate government. But um, really, as far as anarchism, uh, Larkin Rose is a huge influence of mine. Oh, yeah. Awesome. He's he's a genius. He's a, he, but he's he, it's just the obvious stating that stating the obvious driving by the obvious. You know, we all we all know we're free and we know we already know these things. So it's just great to hear somebody say them and say, well, I already knew that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I uh, you know, I firmly believe that we're all born anti-authoritarian, um, maybe not understanding the anarchist philosophy or volunteers philosophy, but right in in innately not feeling like there's a difference between an elder and you know you and, and a child right there's no difference between authority and you you know we're both we're all human beings right but through you know corporal punishment through authoritative parenting um you understand that, that it's beat into you that there is a difference you're inferior to the authority figure right you have to be quiet you have to respect your elders you know even if they don't respect deserve respect you have to respect <laughs> yeah you know 
And yep, you are supposed to obey at any and all costs. And if you don't obey, you know, they'll make sure that you learn to obey again. And you weren't even doing anything like, for instance, you were feeding the homeless. Yeah. <laughs> but that's illegal, you know. Or you were giving someone a hug as a kindergartner, and that's illegal. A, 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 you know, a child giving someone else a hug, he gets reprimanded for that now. Yeah. That's not the case. That's not illegal. That's not true. You're, <laughs> you're, you're free to do so. <laughs> yeah, right. Feeding, feeding the homeless or, you know, growing a plant in your backyard or, <laughs> you know, having the wrong type of salad in your pocket. <laughs> right. <laughs> could land you yeah. in jail for decades, right? <laughs> exactly. And it's not, it's not a joke to them. It's not, it's not a game. And so it's not a, it's not a joke to them. Then it's not a joke to me. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not playing around about being free and, you know, my dedication towards what I do with my music. It's its not a joke. It's dead serious that I'm, I mean, it's fun. We have a blast in my shows, but I, me personally, I'm working tooth and nail to make this happen. So more and more people can feel what, what I, I put in my music, which just to make them feel I've been free, you know? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so so tell us a little bit about the, uh, the Banksters video uh, and the message behind that. Uh, Banksters was put out about a year ago, a year or two ago, but, uh, Banksters is, um, basically they own your reality and they control your salary. The Banksters, um, people are not aware of the effects of our, our monetary system and how it works. And I decided to make a music video, just cutting to the chase and letting everyone know how we're all controlled by the same system of control which is we all go out every day and our blood, sweat, and tears is measured in value by a system of control. It's not, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not free market regulated. We don't get to decide what that product's worth. It's regulated by other people who do not have our best interest at heart. And usually they are the culprits for most of the uh, wars and famine we face. These people are not joking. They are banksters or gangsters. That's what I'm yelling. They own your reality and control your salary. And um, I just wanted to put it out so everyone could get on the same page. I like to bring people together because we're all controlled. There's no there's no difference between all of us. And we're all in this together. So I wanted to really just put out a song that something that we could all look at and say, that's what we all face, really. And just make people think a little. And I, in the video, I used um, a lot of footage from the ice, Icelandic uh, peaceful revolution they had against the banksters. Mm, right. Yeah, they they uh, they 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 uh, imprisoned the, the the bankers, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. They sure did. And uh, the the IMF was a part of that. You know, the IMF, central banks, the Federal Reserve, the World Bank, they're all in on it. And Greece is going through it right now with the IMF. And just for people out there who are watching this who might not know, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, they will come and help a country out. <clears throat> and say yes we'll give you your money but we are entitled to some of these resources that you have here after we take care of you and um the reason that these countries are in trouble in the first place is usually through imf and world bank regulations it's not a free market we don't live in a free world so they create the problem to get the solution they want yep yep hey, again i like the problem reaction solutions the classic yep. classic formula for uh government control um yep. but uh one thing you said uh was uh you know the people that control you know you know the people the political masters as well as the um the bankers in the in the central banks they they don't have our best interests in mind and what i would say also is even if they did have our best interests in mind like even if you go in there you like you i genuinely want to help people there is really no way that you can use the current system to help people right Every time you interfere with peaceful people engaging in voluntary interaction, you will always cause harm. Always. <laughs> like, yes. there, there is no way that one man can, or even a small group of people, you know, a couple of hundred people, can predict and know what the billions of interactions will be on a daily basis between millions of people <laughs> or billions of people. That's right. It's impossible, right? So. That's, one That's thing, right. You know, so it really doesn't matter if they do or they don't have our best interest. They can't do good. <laughs> it, yes. Even if they have your best interests at heart, if they're involved in this system, it doesn't matter because it, it won't work. It doesn't help anyone. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's the truth. And when I talk to people, uh, you know, in the street, like when, you know, when I take my kids to the playground or to the park or to you know the library, and I like to talk about um, try to introduce people to volunteerism. Although I don't say anarchists, of course, that would <laughs> be a horrible right. way to start a conversation. I don't even say volunteers most of the time. I I usually start off by talking about economics, right, the monetary system, yep. because most people. Right don't understand it, number one. Number two, they don't get offended because it's like, you know, it's just money. How can you get offended by talking about money? Right? You know, you're just talking about what's, what does money mean? What's fiat currency? What's, what's the precious metals? You know, what is inflation? Most people don't even understand those basic concepts. And so when I discuss that, it's a great illuminating experience and people are like, and then slowly you can kind of edge anarchy into the equation. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. It's the only way to do it because I don't want to I don't want to turn anyone off from the fact that they're being used, abused, lied to, and controlled. So, so yeah, I, I, that's usually how I start conversations is, uh, is, is talking about the monetary system because there's so much myth and misconception associated with that. Like even, even in, my, um, in the economics class in my, at my high school, I, I remember, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, they don't talk about much about, you know, Aust- you know, Austrian type economics that would kind of be self defeating, right? In a public, in a government school, talking about Austrian economics, you know, yep. it's, it's more like the Keynesian. However, I'll say this: my um, my teacher, my economics teacher, he did introduce us to a few things. That I remember first one he introduced us to is the Robert Kiyosaki video uh, book, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, which came out in ninety seven, and I was I was like in in that class in ninety nine, so. And I, but I didn't pay any attention to it because I'm like, yeah, what's this? <laughs> Not important. Right, right. And then the other thing is he taught us about inflation. It is pretty interesting. He, the way he did it, he's like, he asked the kid, you know, it was like seventh, seventh uh, period. So it was right before you go to, you know, go home. And so he asked the kids, anybody, um, anybody didn't have lunch, right? So one kid raises, I didn't have lunch. So he, he said, over there is a box of donuts. Go over there, eat as many donuts as you can. <laughs> and then, and then, and then later he's like, all right, all right. So tell us one to 10. How was the first donut? How delicious was it? <laughs> and, you know, it's like, it's awesome, nine, ten. And then as he goes down, like, he's like, oh, it's getting worse and worse <laughs> because I was getting more full. So basically illustrating what supply and demand is, right? And <laughs> as you have all this supply, you know, demand usually goes down. And the more the more of something you have, the less in each individual unit is worth, right? So I thought it was a great right. illustration of supply and demand. And that really stayed with me. <laughs> And also the other yeah, thing is that, one more thing I'll say. He said that the most powerful man in the world. You know, he asked, "What, what does everyone think the most powerful man?" He's like, "Well, the president." No, the most powerful man is Alan Greenspan. He did say that. <laughs> he did say that. You know? which is the head of the Federal Reserve. So, so that's pretty good. And, and, that he and, said and that. it didn't even register. Like, who is Alan Greenspan? And I didn't really understand it until like years later studying. That's good Austin that you economy. remembered that. Though. So that's good. That's real good. Yeah, no, no. That whole that whole system and people have to go through it. There's people that, you know, make a stand and, and homeschool. But, you know, we're all told that we're the problem. All of us. And uh, my music is to counter that and let people know, no, you're not. Because on Earth Day, everyone is, hey, save the Earth and blah, blah, blah. And I'm the one saying, now, these people telling you about Earth Day are the same people who destroyed the planet. It wasn't me and you. Yeah. I know you feel bad about doing it, but if we would have used hemp, <laughs> we would not have had to destroy the rainforest. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, in 1929 and 30s and 40s, you know, Henry Ford had cars designed out of hemp that, you know, could withstand, you know, more, more than any car today. So... I, I, I'm here to counter any of that and let people know that they're not the problem because yeah. a, everything we're told, we are the problem. <laughs> it's bad. It's true. It's true. I, and uh, <clears throat> I come from a family of fierce Democrats. And uh, my, my mother actually claims she's a socialist, um, <laughs> which, yeah. which, which is interesting. She's proud of it. But, you know, in our circles, that's an insult, right? If you say, you're so, you socialist. <laughs> that's kind of she, doesn't, she doesn't even know what it means. She doesn't, know, she, she doesn't know that government is responsible for the most murders in the history of the world. She doesn't yeah. know what the word democide is. Yeah, democide, and yeah. once she finds out what democide is, she's going to not be a socialist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, she's probably a good woman. Like most people are good-hearted, you know. They take advantage of people's good hearts and play on them. It's true. Oh, it's so true. I mean, uh, I think you know, it, although government uh, statism is based in fear, right? That's how they get their control by by instilling fear of other people, of other countries, other cultures, other religions. Um, but you're right. It's basically about good intentions. Like people, they go out to vote, 
because they want to help the poor, right? They want to help the sick. They want to help the elderly, right? So we all have good intentions. The problem is the road to hell is paved with good intentions, <laughs> right? So good intentions oh. is not a, good intentions with ignorance can produce a lot of destruction in the world. <laughs> you yeah. know, like uh, Hitler, Hitler had good intentions, right? He wanted to purify yeah. the human race. <laughs> yeah. And look what the good intentions happened. <laughs> The last person anyone should turn to for help is the person who created the problem. And and the problem with that, when you point that out to somebody, is they'll give you their government school history as proof that right, the right, government right. is good. <laughs> right, but we do live in an age where, you know, five-year-olds can pick this up True. and learn for themselves. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, me, myself, I don't know about you, but we'll just go in, I mean, personally – I was I went through all that. You went through all that. I what happens now is kids get out and they have their second um their real education starts when they get out at 18 and they get to learn for themselves and that's about what happened with me and all my friends who were involved in this music and just we wanted to be free anyway. And when we got out of high school, we all basically went on into our own path of um discovery and we discovered so much about that we didn't know and the message of freedom was part of it, you know. After nine eleven, we all we all got a real wide awakening. We had a clue, but that's really what shook all of us up. But it happens to everyone. And then now with technology, you can look it up on your own and find out what what's going on. Who's this person? How did that happen? And you don't have to hear just one source. You can hear many different sources and find out for yourself. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think that uh, technology and, you know, the, the progress of, uh, you know, the age of communication, the digital age, age of information is, ba is what is going to render government obsolete and irrelevant, right? Because yeah. it just can't compete. Like, government cannot compete with, with the marketplace at all. <laughs> it can't compete no. with people trading, people creating, ma you know, making new, uh, you know, new ways to, to communicate, new ways to interact with each other. Um, it's just, it's like, it's like, it's a dinosaur institution, you know, and every government agency is a dinosaur institution. Um, like, like public schools, for example, <laughs> getting worse and worse, you know, year after year. Uh, yet people still believe that it, you know, if you want to get ahead, you have to go to, to public school. Well, they, they've <laughs> been know? sold and they've been sold and told the to fear that it's the only way. And um, I live in a county here in Indiana that the last couple of years they say vote yes to raise your taxes to keep the schools alive. Ooh. And people go out proudly and vote yes yeah. to take more of my money by force so I can keep the schools alive. And what I, what I finally got some people to understand this year is you do realize that if these schools went away and they collapsed, we would still have schools. <laughs> I know, right? well, what do you mean? And I'm like, people will, will have their children educated. Are you, do you want your kids? Ed well, yeah. And I'm like, we will build them and we will educate people or you will educate them on your own and we will have sports teams and we will have bands. And these people have been taking your money and doing nothing with it, but flushing it down the drain, giving your kids less education, less food, taking away all their programs. And you still want to throw money at the fire. <laughs> yeah. instead of just letting it go out and do it yourself and um it's 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 empowering when people do get a glimpse of you know what we're saying they really feel like mm, you know what i could do that <laughs> i could do that people can build roads wait a minute we could build schools and it's funny to see that little light and you know they want to go back to now i need them but um deep down people know we could do it on our own yeah, the, the funny thing is when when you talk to people that have, uh, you know, this uh, very powerful bond with uh, with government, you know, and they ask the questions like, you know, who will <laughs> educate the kids? Who will build the roads? Who will defend, you know, provide defense, uh, you know, protection, security, things like that? The fact, the very fact that they're asking those questions most likely means other people have similar questions, right? And so if other people right. have similar, similar concerns, that constitutes a demand, right? So if there's a demand for something, there will always be an entrepreneur to capitalize on that demand <laughs> because that's how people make money. They find that's out what, pe what people want and then they yep. satisfy it. That's the beauty of the marketplace, yep. right? And so people have, to, people have to realize, you know, you don't need violence or theft, 
<laughs> to get things done. <laughs> like that's such a barbaric way of interacting with your fellow human being, right? But it is. It is. That 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 is the, you you stated that perfectly. <laughs> Because if it's out there and it needs to be done, someone will fill that and do it proudly and offer it a great service. And guess what? If they don't do it to your standard, you actually have a choice and can hire someone else to do it instead of being stuck with the same person day in and day out, same company. I mean, government, they're not a company. They offer you the same service. Like, I'm pretty surprised that FedEx and UPS are allowed to exist. I mean, <laughs> and, you know, years of. Um, the post office finishing millions in debt billions and bil billions billions <laughs> and fedex and ups making money i'm so surprised that the feds allow them to still exist because they just point a glaring picture at what government is they're not they're a failed failed dream idea and institution have you heard of lysander spooner no, go on. Okay, okay. So Lysander Spooner, you should look him up. This guy is really awesome. He's a he's a nineteenth uh, century um, anarchist abolitionist, um, and uh, and also yeah, also anarchist. And he he started what's called the American Letter Company, uh, okay. which which competed with the USPS yeah. at the time. Did you hear about that? <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Go on. Yeah. So so at the time, USPS charged like three dollars for a stamp right and uh, which was a lot of money in those days right and so he he decided to open up his own company and charge three cents per stamp right and of course he became you know people really popular people flocked to him you know it's a great business model of course very efficient very you know smooth you know because it's private business right he understood how to allocate resources how to how to move his capital he understood it and he did an excellent job and ups usps tried to shut him down by by like suing him right various ways and he came out on top most of the time but eventually they did forcibly shut him down and then they enacted laws to prohibit anybody else from competing with usps right so so the thing with usps is they have a monopoly on on um mailing pieces of paper <laughs> that's their monopoly you, right. wait a minute you mean you mean government has a monopoly on something <laughs> i know right <laughs> that doesn't happen and, they don't have a monopoly on on force right. or uh <laughs> exactly. yeah, they don't have a no no way there's no way they would do that they care about <laughs> us they would not do that and the funny thing is people you know really think though so if there was no usps you think nobody would be able to move pieces of paper around <laughs> right 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 and and like and and like my music is very charged and um you know part of freedom is defending yourself and i hate seeing people brutalized murdered or hurt and, you know, I have to explain to people, you don't think we would still have a peacekeeping force if we didn't have the police. The difference is you would be able to hold them accountable because right now oh, you yeah. can't hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. They do what they want and they investigate themselves. We fund it and they run it. <laughs> it's that simple. We, we, but, yeah, we would still have everything we have now and we would have better versions of it because we want good things we're humans we want to be warm we want we we like good things i don't know why how people have accepted the idea that uh, you know everyone wants bad things no there's a couple people that are bad and would want bad things and if we lived in a free society they would be left alone and no one would interact with them and the the market would take care of itself and those people would just be left alone to <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> be horrible people Ostrac while the rest of us ostracism, thrive. Ostracism is a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if we had a free market, you, you, I, I just tweeted something out. I said, if, if, if something is boxed in or held back, don't act like you know what it's capable of. We don't know what we're capable of as people. We don't. We've been boxed in. There is no reason why we couldn't. We couldn't. I mean, there's no limits to where or how we could be living right now. And I'm here to stand for that, talk about that, and fight for that because there were people way back in the day that did that, 1918 to you know to now, that were pushing the envelope of technology and freedom, and they proved that we could live multitudes of ways and and have a lot. I mean, these are again, this is a sign of how far we can evolve and we can go much further, oh, and yeah. we're going to. We're not going to be stopped. It's going to happen. Oh yeah, that reminds me of a quote, uh, which is. Um a, a bird that's born in a cage thinks flying is an illness. <laughs> Correct. Correct. <laughs> you know, it's hey. like, it's like the government is, is one giant broken window fallacy, right? <laughs> or also, or Bastiat's, you know, seen in the unseen, you know, it's like people, you know, when you talk about government and, and you know, that we should, we should, we should do away with it, you know, they're like, but look what it did. It gave us public education. It gave us NASA, 
You know, it gave us this awesome military. Are you saying that that's like that we could do that on our own? I'm like, I'm like, well, um, <laughs> that's what you see, right? That's that's all. That's the only thing that you see. But what you don't see is the potential that has been annihilated because of the force that was enacted in order to rob the people to fund those things, right? By force, by force and coercion. You know, if you, <laughs> you know, we have no idea where we would be. Maybe we'd have flying cars by now. Maybe we wouldn't even need roads. Like, no, we exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's not a, there's no reason why we couldn't be doing. And people people need to take themselves to. That's why kids are awesome. Kids have imagination. You can tell kids to look out on that road and ask them, "How do you see it? How would it be built?" And just let them go and let them talk because they're not what they say is not insane. They're being real when they have imagination because we start with imagination and then we bring it to fruition through hard work and a free society. We could have those things. There's no reason why we couldn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and and the, and the other thing is, you know, I, I've read some people say like if if there was a button that uh, that could you know shut off government like night and day, you know, would you push it? <laughs> and <laughs> and I think that one, one one thing that doesn't that doesn't really take into account is people kind of think that government is the buildings, is like you know the jet fighters, is the bombs, is you know the Department of you know the IRS building. That's government. No, government is a state of mind, it's a mentality, right? Statism is the belief in authority, right? So if you do away, if you destroy all those things, but you don't educate the people, they're gonna create it again. <laughs> you know, it's like you you top yeah. you top of one dictator with a violent revolution. What do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> Another dictator comes around, right? It's very true. And during uh, all these revolutions going on around the world, I, I make sure to tell people, you know, eliminating one one form of the problem and replacing it with the with the new version of it is not going to help. And like in Egypt, they've had three revolutions in the last six years. They have a revolution and then they install the same thing that was the problem beforehand. <laughs> right. It's going to be endless. It's right. just going to keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I mean, the problem is like, like you know, when we learn our, in our history books, government history books, like, you know, we learn we're the good guys. Hitler's the bad guy, right? It's always us, the good guy, and Hitler's the bad, or other people are bad guys, right? But, and, and I think that's looking at life so black and white, like a, you know, false dichotomy type, like, it, it's almost like a sports team. It's like us versus them, like, we're the good guys, they're the bad guys. Somebody has to be the good guy, right? But I think a better way to look at it is, no, it's this violent, authoritative regime versus that violent authoritative regime and yep. basically whichever has the biggest guns writes the history right <laughs> yeah instead of whoever has the best product or the you know basically it could be a world where whoever has the best product shines who works the hardest shines who's great to other people shines we could live in a world like that and that's who people would want to do business with because that's who we want to do business with but we don't live in that world because we think and we're told and sold that it is okay to be ruled by force, that we need someone else's permission to be free, to live. You know, I, I'm free. I have all the papers to prove it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I got them all. I got them all. I got 11 different licenses to go fish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. for, for, you know, it, it's no, <clears throat> that's not the case. That's not how it works. That's what, um, that, it, and it's, it's a risk. I'm an artist. I get that. But I love people and I'm not going to give up on them. And I care about them so much that that's why I talk about this. I don't want to see them taken advantage of. Yeah. That's what. That's why I'm here. And that's why I do what I do. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about um, intellectual property and, and what's your views on that? I, I kind of know what you're going to say, but I just want you to... No, no, no. You probably don't know what I'm going to say. Like uh, intellectual property and so the anonym, the difference of an intellectual property... Copyrights, well, um, as a famous rap artist said, maybe the best rapper ever to live, Nas, he said, no idea is original. There's nothing new under the sun. It's never what you do, but how it's done. Um, I sell music. You can get my new album online on iTunes, but my product takes care of itself, and I have no problem with um, what they call bootlegging. I don't believe in... Um, I don't believe in copyrights. Of course. <clears throat> yeah, but that's one thing that my brother, who's, who's 23, 
uh, you know, like I talk to him a lot about volunteer philosophy, and he's kind of learning it and understanding it. But one thing, like that's it's it's really hard for him to understand is how volunteers rappers can be against intellectual property and like you know you know it's like that's yours that's your stuff what if somebody copies it and tries to make money off it if they copy it if they copy it they copy it and it's their version of me yeah like we're all influenced by you know this recipe i got from whoever down the street it's still it's not hers it's i put my soul and blood sweat and tears into this pie she gave me the recipe but this is my cake yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it there's really no such thing. It justifies people who are afraid of um, evolution. I know people are scared that people can take what they work so hard on and use it to their advantage. And here's the deal. If you made something and someone else puts out the same version of it, your product better stand out and be your product. And you shouldn't be worried about someone else who wants to take your idea, as a matter of fact. That is a, a sign of flattery. That's um, them giving you a shout out. That's proving that you paved the way. That's proving that you are doing something right. And um, no, I mean, I have like, you can go on my SoundCloud page. I have 30, 40 songs up for free download. Well, on top in my new album piece, you can buy it for 10 bucks on iTunes. But I'm going to give people something for free to entice them to uh, come to a show or you know, buy an album or buy a T-shirt online. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'd like to tell the story about intellectual property. I think it illustrates well. Monty Python, the uh, you know the British comedy uh, show, um, they, uh, I think they were popular like in the '80s or something, right? The '80s or '90s, something like that. And um, and when some people, when YouTube came out, some people started uploading their you know I guess portions of the movie onto YouTube, right? And then YouTube started kept shutting that you know kept taking down those videos because of you know internet intellectual property yeah, or copyright violation copy, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah and and then finally they um you know the people from Monty Python they're like all right all right we won't go after them let's just let it let them post and stuff and so what ended up happening is the the teenagers that never ever heard of Monty Python or never grew up with it started watching like this is awesome and their, yeah. reven- their revenue went up <laughs> as a yep. result <laughs> yep it's like that's right it's like you you would rather less of your product be disseminated and distributed you know because you're afraid that somebody might use it for their own you know advantage or try to sell you know so you would you would you would restrict the access <laughs> you know it just doesn't yeah. it doesn't make sense i mean there's ways like yeah. there's there's unforeseen ways that people make money you know i have a um i have a vague story about my new album which is called peace and the a is for anarchy and uh basically I'll just say this. I, I, I took an image that was well known and gave it life because that's what my music is about. And it got out there and the message got out there and the original artist actually hit me up. Uh-huh. And I was flattered. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know they existed. And I looked for this original artist. And the first message, instead of, hey, we're in this together. I can't believe, you know, it's great to see someone giving this life. The first message was a direct threat to copyright and that they were going to sue me and burn me down. And I have nothing to show for any of that. I'm an independent artist who, you know, is going against the grain. I got all odds against me with what I talk about. That person should know. And I was giving, I was giving their image life. They hit me up. And I could have given that, I could have made their image relevant again and their name again. Yeah. If they would have, you know, done it in a peaceful manner, and instead I had to delete, shut down, and dissimulate that that uh, that image that I was using to help promote the message that they were already advocating in their message. It was crazy. It was weird. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, do you know Cal Moline from, no. from Liber- Liberate RVA. He uh, Who is that? he's an anarchist in in Richmond, Virginia. And okay. he uh, he basically goes to the universities over there, and he and he uh, sets up his sign. You know, ask me I've, ask me why government is immoral. <laughs> yes, he's great. I love that yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he does yeah. really great, great stuff. So I love so it. on his um on his website, you know, when he posts, uh, sorry, on his YouTube, when, when he posts his videos, you know, he has the intro, and uh, and he has he had a song called Anarchy, right, by this okay. group, and I guess he didn't ask for their permission, right, when he when he posted a sample of it, and 
And he's like, you know, it says anarchy. You know, these these guys must understand the anarchist philosophy. <laughs> so they they contact him, and again, just like you, just like you said, very threatening, and say, like, you know what, you know, this is this is you know copyright violation. How can you do this? You know, and and so they he he was forced to take it down, and and YouTube took took down a bunch of his videos. But but he was basically showing the hypocrisy of yeah. making yeah, that, making a song was- called Anarchy. <laughs> That was the weirdest part of what happened with mine because my, my that image that I'm talking about is actually still used, and um, and it made sense. That's what they were talking about, and I I, I felt really bad for um, and I didn't generate any revenue off of it at all, you know. And anything I generate revenue off of with who I work with, I I, I split the I give them the money. That's how it works, you know. They're part of creating it with me. Yeah. Um, tell tell that guy I'll hook him up with the intro song, so he doesn't have to worry. Awesome, awesome. Let him know. <laughs> um, all right. So so what? Uh, let, why don't we talk about your your other uh, video against the odds? What's the, what's the message with that? Um, against the odds is the new music video off of the new album piece. It's the intro track, and the basis and premise of that is anyone who's living who's less than thirteen years of age has been living in a cage. Because since that day, they cursed us all when they blew them up and we watched them fall. If you are alive and you're 14 years or younger, you've been living in a world at war. Period. Point blank. 2001. And now to now we live in a world, uh, the world at war. The war on terror is real. And I just made that video and you got to watch it. My nephew did an amazing job. He's awesome. (laughs) He... He he did a great job, and in that video, actually, there's a gym. Um, he's watching in a car a clip from a, a 1988 cartoon of the World Trade Center blowing up, and he's watching that, and he's watching the news, and Syria is blowing up, and he's asleep, and he's having a dream, and he is constantly scared, which is what they're doing to these kids. They live in a world of war, and they're all afraid. They want these kids to grow up afraid so they turn to them for the answers. And it's sad. It's horribly gut-wrenching to see free, beautiful minds grow up to be constantly afraid of anything and turn to their masters to protect them. When that's not the case. I mean, you're, you're, you're free. We're all going to end up one day perished. So why live in fear? I mean, this is it. We got one life. We must make the most of it. Instead, they have everybody boxed in, controlled, and trapped. And um, I touch on a lot in my music about 9-11 because it affected me directly. And the problem, reaction, solution we talked about earlier with the Hegelian dialect, there's plenty of evidence to link multiple things that have happened in the in the history of the world where they created the problem to get the reaction they want so they can enact their solution in there. And their solution is uh, perpetual fear, and we're going to pat down your grandma. We're going to have TSA agents at the be- bus stop now. Um, we're, you're going to be scared all the time, and we're going to protect you because the boogeyman wants to blow you up. <laughs> yeah. uh, even though ISIS and North Korea don't have a, a military jet to their name or anything that can actually get here, you just be afraid because something might blow up at some time, so just constantly be afraid of everyone and anywhere and give up any rights you ever had to think or be free. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, and yeah, it's true. I think ISIS yeah, doesn't have a Navy or, 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 or uh, an Air Force, <laughs> that stuff. Yeah, so and- if they get here and they do that, you know, people need to remember, how did that, how did that happen? I mean... <laughs> right. Made in, who the, tra- made in the uh, USA, who, right? <laughs> right. Who trained Osama bin Laden? We right. trained him. Yeah, I right. mean, his name was Tim Osman. I mean, get out of here. <laughs> We're not dumb. You know, who who trains these people? Who, who uh, you know, yeah. it's it, they don't just show up, you know. It, it's, it's, it's sad to see little children grow up afraid all the time. I had a, one kid back in the day tell me, but 2012 is coming. We're not going to live past that. And I looked at him and I was like, what the, wow. you know, I felt so bad that he had to go to bed with that. Could yeah. you imagine? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's grueling, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fear is the, uh, is the foundation. It's the underpinning of statism. Um, and yeah, definitely. It's like, it's like, uh, I think H.O. Mencken, he, he said, uh, um, you know, it's like government um, fabricates these, you know, 
these boogeymen and hobgoblins and, <laughs> and none of them are real right it used to be you know it, it used to be hitler right nazis right and then it used to be the communists right then it, then it was the cold war right and now now it's uh the terrorists <laughs> now it's the muslims yeah uh, but like, yeah well, wasn't it al-qaeda and then now it's you know and and the, the other part is who created the problem like i mean for instance we invaded iraq destabilized it's called blowback yep. we created yep. a massive you know powder keg of people who never really got along in the first place mm -hmm. and um then you get what you know what they have now and they're good with it but it goes on worldwide they, they put brother against brother and sister versus mother and it's it's horrible yeah yeah it's uh yeah yeah r really sad and 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 i think it illustrates also the double standard of of government which is like um you know they can they can rob people right steal from people and call it taxation right they can print money <coughs> counterfeit and they can call it you know currency creation they can go overseas and murder people in mass numbers and invade their country and call it the war on terror right <laughs> it's not it's not mass murder it's not genocide right when you when you when you have a nice uniform a nice shiny badge and a gun, right? That's <laughs> the yep. issue, issue it, from... It, it depends who's doing it. It's a peacekeeping mission. Yeah, you peacekeeping, know. yeah, right. <laughs> now, there's there's some disturbing statistics out there that are facts that people can't deny. I mean, it's bad, like 600,000 or 900. I mean... Yeah, I think it's close I to a million. Close to a million uh, Middle Easterners that are, you know, casually you yeah. know, dead or, or wounded or some or affected. And what, and what people got to realize is this is... Um, this is what they call collateral damage, innocent lives, me and you, people who are not having anything to do with the war. They just blow them up because they're part of it. Yeah, yeah. And then and you have the drone strikes, uh, which um, for, let's say they even hit one, you know, mili militant extremist. It creates like 20 other militant extremists because you have the right. family members that are grieving. And they're like, God damn it, I hate America. And then what, what are they going to do? You know, they're going to pick up a weapon and... You know, and try to uh, and it, and it, and it, and it usually costs them thirteen innocent lives to hit one of what they call a so-called enemy. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you and you might be an American citizen traveling, and they might blow you up, and you don't get a trial. Right. Did which you, happened as well. Did you see the um, the the um, American Sniper movie? Uh, no, there's no way <laughs> I, I know, right? no. There's no way I could see that. Yeah, I mean, there's a way I could see it because I understand. I think I know the art behind it. I think that they, I think the movie was created to um, to play with people to see what they worship. Yeah, I, I heard. I heard. Was that was that Clint Eastwood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard. I heard actually that Clint Eastwood has um, libertarian leanings. And yeah. and uh, and that his his intention with the movie was was not to glorify war was actually to show the horrors and atrocities of war, and and what's in, what actually happened is is in a lot of Americans it hardened their patriotism their nationalism and their hatred for the for the Muslims right for the <laughs> for the Middle Correct. Easterners. Well, it did, but it also I mean it's a sick trick. I don't know if it's a trick. Um, he just. Show people what they already were inside. I, I don't. I I want to show people what they are inside by pointing out the good in them and showing. You know, I know that artistic angle. I get it, but it, it doesn't work. It's like it's like it's. I'm not here to blame blame us for something we didn't do. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. There was a uh, Louis C.K. You know, you know Louis C.K. the the comedian. Yeah, oh yeah, he's he, great. Uh, he's, he said this pretty awesome thing about about the war on terror. You know, he's like he's like um, you know these these uh, these soldiers. They they go overseas and they they get they come back broken and you know you know nightmares and P PTSD and everything. And we're like, oh, that's horrible, and then or or wounded like you know wounded from the from the war, right? <laughs> and then and he's like, maybe if you are the one to invade another guy's country and then you get shot maybe it's a little bit your fault <laughs> you know it's like it's like you go over there invade their country you know kick yeah, down their like, doors no. you know murder the kids murder the women and children you come back oh my god i'm feeling horrible i have nightmares <laughs> it's like really <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I laid that stat out the other day to someone on Memorial Day that, you know, I mean, 22 veterans kill themselves a day. Yeah, right. Suicide, right. Yeah. I mean, that's that. 
does that people cannot handle that statistic they say they care about the troops and they care about their country and this and this false entity of this thing that gave them freedom when it didn't they're already free and when you tell them 22 dudes that went off to fight for you kill themselves every day because of the horror that government put them through they can't swallow it it's too much and i get that yeah. but i'm here i'm here to remind them of that the truth is harsh and can be cold but it is liberating yeah definitely it, it, in the end you are you are liberated and i mean we've all had things we didn't want to know told to us but we really did need to know it you might have been been living in denial to think that this was a certain way but when you find out the truth you're free yeah one one interesting uh, uh response when you talk about volunteerism to people is well if we don't have a military or a government uh what's to stop china from invading us what's to stop russia from invading us what's to stop you know pick an x country that's a boogeyman what's to stop them from invading us and i think that that that's like a fundamental misunderstanding of of government, which is basically they're saying the whole of Russia wants to invade the United States. <laughs> the, the whole of China, everybody in China wants to invade the United <laughs> they States. Don't. No, 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 no. Most want. of the people in China, they just want to go to work. They just want to like. <laughs> they want to go fishing. They, they want to do what you want to do. <laughs> they want to go camping. They want yes. to raise their kids. They want to, you know, put them in a good school. You know, they want to <laughs> educate. Yes. They don't want to invade another country. It's the sociopaths, the the the, the megalomaniacs in power that want to do all the, the invading and killing and murdering. So stop believing and, in them. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And if you and it seriously is like if you stop believing in them, they go away. Sure. Oh, yeah, you know, definitely. It, and and that's where another aspect of my music is people who misconstrue it and think I'm talking about some crazy armed. No, no, no. I'm talking about walking away from the people you prop up and they collapse. Yeah. And then you walk away and you work volunteer voluntary with other people and you live free because people in China and Russia want to just live. They don't <laughs> have a desire to come over here and do some crazy we don't have those desires the the people who rely upon on you know us to worship them and rule us by force they they want those things to happen and they make those things happen it's not some guy and 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 the unfortunate thing what you said earlier about the drones is and like i've been involved in many peacekeeping and uh, you know r all types of um causes because i care about people and i'm full-blooded irish like i said and i knew about the division in in ireland as a child i'm adopted but my mom and dad taught me about it and they put brother against brother in ireland and the same thing happening in israel and i i knew about palestine and israel i had uh, jewish friends growing up and i had you know middle eastern friends growing up and it's terrible when you bulldoze someone's house or you drone their cousin they're gonna want to do something so we got to walk away from the fact that these people are allowed to do whatever they want because they say so. Because they're only creating people, they're only creating, you know, people who are upset about it and will react. That's not good. Yeah, 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 the uh, you know, the the desire to put people in power over, you know, a, a select elite group of people that have superhuman rights that we do not have is a very dangerous thing, right? The belief in authority, like it reminds me of uh the Stanley Milgram experiments. Have, have, have you heard about that? Yeah. yeah awesome. Yeah. That's some, some awesome, really earth shattering stuff because, because it really illustrates um, human nature to a great extent, how we are all who have gone through public school taught the importance and the, the, you know, the crucial nature of believing in authority, you know, that authority knows best. Authority is always looking out for us. You know, truth comes from authority um intelligence comes from authority knowledge co everything comes from authority do not think for yourself right if you have a question you ask a teacher ask an authority figure <laughs> right and that's one of the major reasons why my kids will not be going to government school among other things you know that's one of the reasons is that you know the way i i parent is i try to teach my kids um, I try to treat them as equals, <laughs> which just sounds revolutionary to most people. You know, it's yeah, like, that is revolutionary. They're my friends. They're my equals. Yes. I'm not superior. Maybe I'm older. Maybe I'm stronger. 
but that doesn't mean I'm more right, right? And I do make mistakes. We all still make mistakes, right? So we have really no right to impose our arbitrary will onto another human being, right? Regardless and, of and the, yeah, and especially in a learning state when children are learning. I mean, they're 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 opening their whole minds up how they're going to be the rest of their life. So why would you want to box it in now? I mean, holding holding kids back and telling them it's this way just prohibits. And that's why I said earlier, when you turn, you know, when you get out of that system, you have a reawakening to where you're like, wait a minute, I actually can do this. <laughs> I mean, nobody told me I could run. They told me you could run your own business, but, you know, I have a niece and she's, She's grown up in this world of technology and she's, um, you know, in middle school. And I tell her by the time she's 18, she has to have three businesses because she can. Mm. She she knows Outlook Express. She knows every iPad situation and all these <laughs> programs. Some kids play games. She, she, you know, she understands money and numbers. And I, I guarantee there's not one teacher that tells her that she could run an empire by the time she's 18. But there's a kid who created an app for a BlackBerry in another country five years ago who's sitting on $2 million. It's because he believed he could do it. There's, a, you know, it's a difference. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you know, public school does not encourage creativity or imagination. Basically, creates workers <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, people who obey orders, right? You know, you as a child before school, you obey your parents, right? In school, you obey the teachers. Then you, then you leave, you obey your boss. You're always obeying, right? Somebody. And, um, and, and, and it's really, um, it's not, it's not a situation for growth, you know, <laughs> intellectual, intellectual advancement. Right. So, you know, it's amazing how revolutionary it is when I tell people, no, actually I'm just, I just want to encourage whatever they're interested in. And I want them to pursue that. Like what, <laughs> what if they, <laughs> what if they don't learn how to read or write or, or do, you know, geometry or <laughs> I'm like, well, if it's not. If it's not applicable to their lives, what's the use? Like, like how much? Like, think about how much information exists right now, right? Like from the yeah. beginning of you know of of written you know books, how much information is in existence now? How much of that is irrelevant to our lives today, <clears throat> right? right. <laughs> like, right. like who really gets to choose what arbitrary things are taught and what's important? And you know that's completely arbitrary. <laughs> you that's can't, right. You can't. You know. No. And I mean, if you're with adults working all the time, eventually it comes up that you don't use a majority of what you're taught. And it has no shot, nothing to do, no disrespect with the teachers who thought they were doing good and all these people who it's just the truth, man. You I did you you didn't do anything for me. You taught me how to conform, how to be a part of a collective that I wasn't. I was my own person that I could not even find because you had me entrapped in this. And that's why some kids during school do rebel because they don't want to be a part of it, but they're held there by force. It's jail. I mean, I have track 10 on my album is called Control, featuring uh, Arjuna from my label mate, Strong Roots Records, and uh, the outlaw Josie Wales, the anarchism activist if you know her nice. she's yeah, on there yeah. talking oh is it? and cool. it, it yeah it's about the school system and we got a music video coming for it but it's about the school it's about this is you you, you cannot be yourself you cannot be who you want to be it is jail for children and if you've ever people out there have ever seen josie's video where she talks about the school system it's it's uh quite remarkable but my out my my song on there does is just a playoff on that, but shout out to Arjuna and Josie for getting on that song with me. Yeah, that uh, that video I think it's called "The Prison by Another by Any Other Name." It's an yep. awesome video. I, that's you know when I talk to people about homeschooling and about government school, the nature of government school, um, and they they are receptive to hearing it, then I send them that video. <laughs> because, yes, that's great. Because that's great. if you were to send them that video first, it's kind of a slap in the face, and they might yeah. like they might like get offended, right? You gotta get yeah. given the background, like. Like no, actually, there is a lot of parallels between prison, <laughs> and, yep. and 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 what you said was was good. You said that the teachers have good intentions, right? And again, going back to good intentions, we all, most of us, have good intentions, right? There are you know sociopaths and psychopaths and murderers and rapists, but for the most part, I think people have good intentions, right? People go into public um, public school t as teachers because they want to educate kids, right? The problem is 
it's an inflexible and oppressive system, right? And it doesn't tolerate people doing whatever they want to do, right? If you deviate from the curriculum, you're not going to be treated nicely by your superiors, <laughs> you know? That's right. If so, you want to learn what you want to learn, you're a problem and will be dealt with. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the problem is, uh, uh, you know, and I think this is helpful to, for, to illustrate to people is that, you know, we're not out to vilify individuals, right? No. You know, individuals no. can change, they can learn, they can improve, they can grow. It's the philosophy of statism that we seek to abolish, right? And government, right. that's all it is. It's a mentality of, you know, thinking that some people have special superhuman rights over other people that can rule and have the moral right to rule, <clears throat> right? So, so that's, I think that's good to point out. Yeah, I don't hate any, no. I do not hate anybody, wish ill will on them, judge them. I do not judge people. I, I get it because I was there. That's the other part is yeah, I yeah. know and I'm still learning. And I can't blame someone who was held by force or held hostage or, you know, doesn't understand or, or get it all. But the best part is, is when you find common ground with those people and you do have that moment at your job or wherever you're at where you look at each other with a group of 11 people and you all realize, I never use algebra. <laughs> that was yeah, that right. was complete waste of time and then you get a little smile on your face and then you might you know slide in some things about the control system and yeah. a couple of them you might slide a video or a song and they say you know what i really like this and it's like and that was like that was my goal with um uh, with that song on the album um nebby moon he's a producer i gotta give him a shout out amazing producer he produced my whole album up and coming young guy he's got a child and i knew let me just send you the crux of this album. And I kept sending him songs and he was producing, but I sent him Josie's video and out of nowhere, he sent me back a beat with her um, sampled in the song, you know, where she's talking in the hook. And I, and then I, and then I rapped over it and, and uh, he was just, it opened him up to what, you know, volunteerism and anarchism is. Cause he, he believed in freedom too. Yeah. And a lot of people out there do, they're upset. A lot of people are mad at, cops shooting 12 year old kids and all these horrible things going on but they they need to see who created these problems and i i'm mad love to you for doing what you do and everyone out there who has the courage to you know because we care about people to show them you know who's doing this i respect <laughs> i respect the heck out of people like that man yeah, it's funny it's funny that you said you know we do it because we care about people because one of the one of the um <clears throat> attacks that many of us get and i've gotten this too is you just you just hate the poor. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you oh, yeah. hate you hate the old people. You hate the sick people. Why do you hate the poor so much? <laughs> I love them. I, I I hang out with poor people. That's funny. Way more, and I want them to be successful. They got great ideas. I want to see be able to thrive, but they can't thrive right now because they're boxed in, and, and they got they got everybody on their system to keep them in check, and they rigged it. They they rigged it from the jump. They gave you a number when you came out of the womb and you 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 didn't even get to make a decision or consent. You're in their system right right from the jump. It's, it's that's not that's not right. That's not freedom. Yeah, yeah, and uh and the problem is that again, good intentions, right? People they when you don't have an understanding of economics or philosophy or morality, even, <laughs> you're going to have a tough time really trying to help people. You know, it's like people understand um, they understand like day to day, like, you know, if I help somebody, you know, if, if somebody is like, um, you know, fall, fell down, let's say, you know, if I help them up, okay, I'm going to help. Them. If I rob them, that's not going to help them, <laughs> but, you know, you know, and that, that makes sense on an individual level, but then you expand it to include a country and all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, if we rob people, how is that going to help people? Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, it's like people have, a, have, a, have this conception, like, like at some point, the laws of morality are different. They're inverted, right? Or the laws of economics, right? It's, it's, it makes sense with your family and your close friends, but, but not with somebody who lives in California. No, that person needs to be controlled because that guy is out of line. <laughs> nope. The, the non-aggression principle and the golden rule apply, and it's the best. It's, it, when people get a whiff of that, it's amazing because people believe in the golden rule. And... Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to do with people who want to run for office. But when Ron Paul, get in front of sixteen million people on a Republican national debate, said he believed in the golden rule and was booed, yeah, 
Isn't that amazing? That lets, that, that lets you know where the world's at. And that was just people in the audience, but I do believe most people do, um, you know, they, they really care and they do appreciate and want to do good things to others because they know it'll come to them. And I mean, if you want to harm other people, then that's going to come to you too. Really, that's what we're looking for is, is a world of where those people get weeded out. We're looking for a world of accountability and we don't have that right now. Right now, you can do what you want and get away with it if you have a certain title or a badge mm -hmm. or you wear a certain <laughs> costume. You're better than other people. That's not how it works. You don't get special privileges or rights to, to do what you want without being held accountable. Nobody should. Yeah. There's no gods on this earth. You're not a god. You don't yeah. get that treatment. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't worship you. I don't care what suit you have. How many endorsements or billions you have, or how many speeches you get? You're you, no, I don't worship you. We don't worship you. Yeah, we we uh, we separated religion, uh, church, and state a while ago, but somehow religion has morphed into uh, statism. St oh. State the state itself. <laughs> it's way more scary. It's the <laughs> world's most dangerous religion. Yes, definitely. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, um, you know, people. You know, we 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 constantly, you know, place our faith in these people, these sociopaths that claim again to have our best interests in mind. When in fact, you know, as we as we explained earlier, even if you do have the person's best interests in mind, there is no way you can help people. No way you can help millions of people in their the minutia of <laughs> of interaction on a daily basis. You know, and 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 the other thing is, people have to realize that we already to a certain extent live fundamentally anarchically right much of our lives is dominated by anarchy right nobody yes. tells you what to wear what, what time to wake up you know what job you have what you know what profession what friends you have or what what um you know significant other to choose but um right. you know like if, for example the government started saying you know we're gonna we're gonna choose we're gonna pair people <laughs> by law. right we're gonna, and all of a sudden you know people are like that's that's horrible that's ridiculous but the minimum wage that makes sense <laughs> right right because minimum wage, it makes sense because they have nothing to do with the uh, value of a dollar already or what you're worth. Yeah, yeah. They don't have anything to do with that at all. It's it's totally free and regulated by this product's worth. Yeah. You know, so they should definitely tell you what, what you're worth. Yeah. People, people do not know that their dollar bill, I'd pull one out of the drawer, is the same as a, a, a monopoly dollar. They don't see that they're the same. As long as it says Federal Reserve note, it's an IOU from a bunch of murderers. That's it. It's an IOU. I'll pay you back from people who, you know, do horrible things to other people. That's the last person I want to trust with paying me back. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not real money. That's not <laughs> going to happen. It's not money. Right. And the, and what's the what's the primary mission statement of the Federal Reserve is to is to protect and stabilize the US dollar. Oh, wait, wait. How how good has it done has it done that mission? Okay, let's see. <laughs> 1913 to today what lost 98% of its value. All right. <laughs> good job. Good job. Of its good value. job, Federal Reserve. <laughs> yep. Yep. You've done you've done wonderful. That's great. <laughs> so so one thing I want to I want to just uh mention before we go, you mentioned um murder and and how and, and they, that brought to mind one thing that people tell me is that you know without government what's to stop people from murdering each other right or raping or or, or robbing and and the thing is like you, we were talking about the law of morality right natural law right there are natural consequences to your decisions right you don't need to go to jail um, or yeah, you know, or to have a law <laughs> making murder illegal that's like that's one of the redundant laws right. Theft is illegal, murder is illegal, rape is illegal. Oh, it's another great one is suicide is illegal, right? <clears throat> so these are <laughs> completely redundant laws. Like, like there are natural repercussions to theft, rape, and murder, right? That would yes. that would most definitely <laughs> exist. That would be taken care of, that and, would, and would happen. Of, yeah, so. yeah. No, no law. No, I mean the law itself. A law doesn't mean anything i mean they, you can just make it up oh, i made a law that you know you can't own this you can't have that that especially what you were talking about killing murder well no doubt it's illegal it's horrible yeah you, you know something's gonna happen if you do that exactly and and the, and the craziest part now is they say you're paying your debt to society yeah right exactly okay i'm sitting in a cage not doing shit actually um, it cost a whole bunch of money yeah. for me to sit in there. 
I, you know, more of the money that we stole from you guys, you're paying for me to sit in there. That's not. Yeah. That's not paying your debt to society. No. <laughs> and if and if if people have morals or, you know, people don't you know believe in uh, the death penalty or whatever, the, how do they pay their debt back to society? I mean, why can't someone just pay it back and work for you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's effective. I mean, putting, why can't p- putting someone life in prison is like it's like that person murdered your relative, and so the solution is to continue robbing the family members to pay room, food, shelter, clothing, yes. board, yes. <laughs> medical, that's medical, medical, hey, you know. <laughs> that's his punishment. That's his that's, punishment. That's his punishment. You know? So basically, a socialist paradise is, is what prison oh, is. It's, it's, <laughs> the prison system is insane. I love when people bring up prison for profits or whatever. I don't I don't care. All I know is, is that they have their parties and their... Um, their fireworks exploding on July 4th, and um, they should go to YouTube on July 4th and watch my new music video, by the way, that will be coming out on July 4th, to celebrate their freedom when um, this is the most prison populated oh, yeah. place in the world. Oh, yeah. You know, you're free. <laughs> you know, <laughs> celebrate. And, and and don't worry at all about the non-violent um you know, no victim, no crime. The person who harmed no one who's sitting in jail. Don't worry about them at all. Just have your barbecue, <laughs> wave your flag, and you'll be good to go. And um, you don't have to worry about anything. And get back to work on Monday. <laughs> go back to work on Monday. Yeah. Don't say it's, anything. You know, don't, don't, don't criticize the government. Just, just go back to work. Yes. <laughs> Everything's taken care of. The experts are in control. <laughs> don't worry. No, I feel bad. I, my music is for the people who don't have a voice, who are sitting in those cages, who did, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it gets to me. I deal with it every day. And I, they go unheard. Everyone forgets about them, and there and there is there are people locked away who did nothing to anyone but themselves. Exactly. Well said, definitely. So, um, all right. So, I don't want to keep you any longer, but um, so why don't you let people know any uh, any links, any any music videos you want them to see, or where they can find your work? Um, I have a website, bloodofthebrave.com. You could go there. I have uh, free music, tons of music videos interviews, apparel, albums, um, excuse me, I have cassette tapes, I dropped an 80s album last wow, year. Wow, cassette tapes? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, some people still have, have that? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Holy I have, crap. <laughs> I have a new, this is uh, this 80s album is called Born to Rebel. Wow. Right. Um, yeah, it features a lot of your favorite 80s music that I rap over. Those are and, the, old, uh, my, the older generation of people. <laughs> oh, man, this stuff is new. I mean, yeah, I put the new twist on this. You can't, yeah. And my new 80s album is going to be even more crazy. But my <laughs> my my recent album is Peace. It's through Strong Roots Records, produced by Nevy Moon. We take the new modern uh, hip-hop, and we just we crush it. And um, I'm a part of a good collective and a humongous scene here in Indianapolis that it's doing really well with the music and it's just it's awesome it's an honor to be with people like you who are down with freedom and i appreciate you having me on but it's blood of the brave.com people can go to my youtube channel and get your mind blown with some hd visuals awesome. i appreciate you thank awesome. you thank you very much um and uh, if if any of you copy some of his work, he'll send you a personal thank you. So you won't you won't try oh, yeah. to, we won't try to sue you, okay? <laughs> no, and and I will ship you the album to your door <laughs> if you go to the website and order it online. You don't have to buy it just from iTunes or Spotify. I'll actually ship it to you. Cool, awesome. Yes, <clears throat> Volunteers Rappers is uh, the way to go. Spread the freedom message to uh, you know whole new audience. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, thank thank you very much, Blooded the Brave. Beautiful conversation. Uh, so, so if anybody wants to donate, um, help out my show, <laughs> uh, you can uh, donate through Bitcoin or PayPal. Uh, if you really want to send gold and silver through the mail, be my guest. I, uh, I don't really trust USPS, but uh, you can try. <laughs> so awesome conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. All right. So Appreciate this, it. This is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.